Hello everyone, this is Agai Rajat. I'm back again with yet another video about React Native. So we are going to continue building our calculator application which we have started in my last video. So if you haven't checked out my last video where I have described how to set your machine up for some React Native development, make sure to check that out before watching this particular tutorial. So in this video, we are going to build the UI which is this particular UI for our calculator application and I'm going to describe each and every single thing which you need to know about for building such kind of UI okay so let's start so first of all we have to understand like what comprises of uh, this particular UI okay so to show you in detail See, it looks like this on the surface, but actually there are four independent React component in this one particular UI. So there is this one red component, which is the expression box, which actually shows what you are trying to calculate. And this is the result box, which shows the result of the computed expression. Then we have got the numpad, which is a collection of yet another React component which are keys. So we have got keys wrapped inside this outer or parent component which is a numpad component. So overall we will require four components. This is one component, second component, third component and the fourth component. So now that we know how many React components we need, let's start building the UI of our application. Before I do that, I would like to explain a little bit about React Native. So this is plain vanilla React. Now this thing is new. If you have seen my earlier videos about React, you might be having some ideas about how React works and how what are components and how components act together in cohesion and all, right? So if you think that you need proper background in react make sure to check my react foundational course out which is uploaded two or three months back on this particular channel and there is the link to that one particular course okay so this is for importing react into our javascript file now this statement is new and it is actually um, specific to react native so react native actually provides you with a set of apis which you can use to show various sort of components on mobile devices so that particular library contains uh, apis for buttons and for style sheets for uh, touch events and all so you can use uh, those component to create UIs like the one we are going to create in this particular tutorial okay so we have got a style sheet text and view okay so view is the basic uh, UI component which gets rendered on iOS and Android natively using their own rendering engines but I mean that on android we have got views and on ios i think we have got ui views right so this view is the wrapper i mean the react native wrapper around the two so whenever you are going to employ this view control from react native it is going to invoke the native views on android and ios and that is how js actually you know send message to the underlying platform of like what kind of uh, control it should render on the screen okay so view is used to compose custom elements okay and text is for you know displaying normal text on the screen then we have got a style sheet which means that uh, for styling the component we need some sort of API. So this is that API, okay? So in the render method, it is returning this particular view, okay? 
so view contains this one particular text element okay so we are going to remove that and now we are going to write our component so first one will be the expression box okay and it is going to take expression okay for now you don't have to be worried about the composition of these things because we are going to uh, see in detail okay the second one will be the result box and then we are going to pass result as state because that will be contained in the state okay all right then we are going to write numpad okay then in numpad there will be three things like a first we whenever a user presses some keys so we have to assemble the expression right so whenever user presses one and it is uh, followed by yet another three pairs on uh, key number two so it will result in 12 right so it will be more like one will be concatenated with two so it will result in 12 so we need a mechanism to concatenate the thing and that mechanism will be housed by this particular parent app component okay so we are going to assemble expression okay now once the user presses the equals to button the result should be displayed in the result box okay so we need yet another method to calculate the result so we are going to pass this calculate result to our component okay and then again there will be this special scenario where user decides to uh, undo some actions like uh, he has typed in 1 plus 2 plus 3 but he decides to delete that 3 and that plus sign so uh, in order uh, for him to allow that move we have to pass yet another handler so this will actually remove the characters from the expression okay so this is going to be rollback expression so as of now we don't have to be worried about these handlers because in this tutorial we are not going to uh, code these things we are just going to write dummy expressions for these and in the third part of the series we are going to have a look into how we are going to tie everything up together in order uh, to make the calculator work in this particular tutorial we are going to look at the ui part okay so this is all just the boilerplate code okay now i particularly house all of my custom components in one folder so i am going to create a new folder and i'm going to name it components but you can choose whatever sort of arrangement you like in your projects so i'm going to create one expression box component okay then the first line will be the copy which is this one okay import react from react okay all right so i'm going to create a class that will be react dot component okay and 
then I am going to write a random method okay and then we are going to return as we have discussed we are going to return oh, let me try to do text and then we are going to apply some styles so we are going to write styles dot expression box okay and then we are going to display this prop which we have got from the parent so that will be expression okay so all right now let's write the styles so to write the styles this is the syntax we are going to create a new style okay now if you are coming from web background you might be aware of css styling right so styling in react native is very similar to styling in css the only difference is that in, in css you write things like this right but in react native you use camel casing so instead of writing this you write this okay all right so react native uses flexbox as is uh, layout uh, mechanism okay so if we give anything flex of one it means it is going to occupy all of the empty space of its parent component so by default uh, we can make everything flex one so that it is uh, occupying all of the empty space of the parent okay all right so i think our expression box is ready right and we are going to uh, style things after some time so let's write the constructor for this so that we can initialize the state okay or so now expression can be anything this is dummy expression okay and result can be anything as well uh, result this is dummy result okay all right now we need these methods as well in our class so let's quickly write them as well so we need this assemble expression okay then we need this again calculate result all right and then we need rollback expression as of now we don't have to be worried about definition we are going to write code in part three okay so save that and make sure to bind these otherwise react will complain when user presses this button because it won't find any method okay so you can copy paste this two more times and then just replace the names so that will be calculate result now all of this has been explained in my foundations of react video so i request you to check that out in case you think that you need more training about the fundamentals of react okay all of this bind thing and why we are doing this has been explained in that particular video okay
so we have got our expression box but as of now these expression box result box and numpad variables are not defined we have already only defined expression box okay so let's quickly test it let's uh, comment that i think you cannot comment like that so let's delete this oops let's delete this for a while okay and expression box but we have not imported expression box so we have to do that import expression box from components dot expression box dot js okay because it is housed in this particular folder which is located in the same directory right so this will be dot slash okay so let's test if it is working fine or not so as of now try to reload the application and let's see if things are working so that we can continue with the rest of the ui it is certainly taking some time okay so it has failed let me see all right so it seems like our project is loading so let's wait for that all right so it is complaining that cannot find variable style sheet in expression box because we have not imported a style sheet like this right so we have to do that so we are going to import a style sheet and text as well because we have used text from react native all right and let's see that okay so here we have got this is dummy expression right we have to make an adjustment in the container that we are going to remove all of these things okay and then we are going to use padding top equals to constants dot status bar height because as you can see this particular expression is uh, you know overlapping on our status bar which is undesirable and expo actually provides us with this constant api which can actually access the height of our status bar on android system so we are going to use that in order to shift our content down by status bar's height okay and then we'll have to import constants as well and it is not housed in react native but it is provided by expo so we have to write something like this constants and from expo right because we are using expo now as you can see that the content has been shifted right okay so let's style our expression box to match up with this particular ui okay so let's try to do that uh, okay so we have got our expression box here so first of all we'll have to align the content to the right side okay and right okay so I, it should be the string okay so the content has been aligned to the right side then we are going to provide some padding okay padding left that should be eight now we don't 
specify px or pixels or ems and other suffixes like we are used to do uh, in css we just write uh, numeric uh, figures right so that will padding right again for symmetrical purposes so okay so we have got some padding then we can you know make give it a color so background color okay so you can give it any color for the time being let's select a color from chrome okay so we are going to invoke chrome developer tools okay and then i'm going to you know inspect the element this is image and since i cannot you know get color from the image i'm going to pick any color from this tool okay so let's me impact this one and from this thing let me invoke any color editor as of now i am unable to invoke any color editor i don't really know what is happening so let me try to just uh, invoke okay so let it can be something like this one i think it is more like this one okay all right so let's try to grab the hex code for that okay and we are going to provide the hex code here all right all right so let's see okay so the color has been applied make font bigger so let it be 32 okay and color can be black or you can do anything uh, less blacker i would say so that can be like has two one two one two one i have this code memorized because i was using this code in one of my products hence i remember that this is uh, somewhat less blacker than the perfect black okay so as you can see that this uh, expression matches with uh, this kind of thing right although the color uh, does not seem to be equal to this color i mean the background color but it is okay you can use whatever color you like right you don't have to stick to this one particular color scheme uh, in order to make this tutorial work okay so we have got our expression box and uh, things uh, seem to be working fine up till this point so let's quickly try to create yet another component which is our oops i think i'll have to do that so as to get the expressions don't worry i'll write everything back because i think okay so this was the thing which i deleted and now i'll have to redo everything so that will be constants padding top okay uh, let me quickly write that let me pause this video okay so i have reverted these two particular expressions so as you can see it is complaining that it cannot find result box so let's quickly write that create a new file it's going to be result box.js okay and let's quickly write so you can copy paste these two things to result box then you can again copy this particular thing again i would say that you can copy all of this thing because result box actually does not how does not house that much content so we are going to use result box here and then we are going to replace this and i think our result box is pretty much done okay as you can see it is still not able to find because we have not imported result box in app.js so i think now for result box as per the design 
we should make the text somewhat lighter and somewhat smaller as well so we can decrement the font size to 26 and we should uh, you know make the color more lighter so that can 42 42 42 just mm, i also remember this one particular code as well because see i use black and white quite a lot so hence i remember that uh, i mean i am able to uh, make uh, shades darker or more brighter by just doing this sort of hex coding okay so we have got our result and result box and i think everything is done yes this one thing because we are styling with result box right so let's quickly import the result box from component okay and result box dot js right let's see what it is complaining about now we test it and it is still unable to find result box what seems to be the problem Mm. let me reload this okay so it is able to find result box now but now it is not able to find the numpad thing so now we have to code the numpad okay all right so let's code numpad new file again then numpad.js or it should be numpad.js okay again we are going to import these two all right and then similarly this statement will remain kind of same just the name will change okay all right let's create the render method now okay and in this render method we are going to put in several keys so we are going to house keys inside this view okay so instead of text we are going to import view okay and then we are going to house keys here okay all right as of now we don't have keys here so let's just write dummy text and that can be text keys will show up here okay so this is just dummy text which we are going to replace pretty soon all right and then we are going to create styles okay for this particular component that will be numpad and that numpad style <coughs> will be applied here okay styles dot numpad now this is the notation i think you might have get that notation from here as well from the very start okay in case you haven't this is how you specify styles and there are ways to uh, you know mix and match various styles okay so you can actually provide more styles with this array like notation so if you are going to do this styles that style 2 right so both of these styles will be applied to this view component and we are going to employ that sort of technique for styling our component but as of now we don't need that so remove this okay now as per the design i think this numpad area is twice as big in height than these two components right so let's make this uh, numpad twice as big so first of all let's try to import this numpad so that we can actually see visually what we are designing okay so 
let it be like components and then numpad dot js okay all right cannot find text variable because we remove text okay let's try to reload this again nothing was written from the render okay so we actually made a syntax error here it should be this and when you are coding stuff this sort of things actually happen so as you can see that All of our three components are visible, but the styling looks off. So to adjust this, as we have seen that numpad is twice as big, we are going to give numpad the flex of two. What it is going to do, it is going to occupy twice as much space in the container or in the parent component as these two guys so if these guys are having flex of one and this is having flex of two so its height will be twice as much as the height of these two guys right so as you can see here that we have got something similar to this thing now right okay so let's style the padding because our keys are not you know going all the way into the borders so we are going to apply some padding and it will be 20 you can apply whatever padding you uh, would like but still I am writing this from top of my mind okay so as you can see that we have got some padding all right so now we need to display some keys here right so as you can see from the design there are two types of keys one are numeric keys and the other ones are operation keys right so which are responsible for addition subtraction or sine theta cos theta things like that and then we have got delete as well so there are two kinds of keys okay so so we will have to make sure that in order to show proper code on this i mean proper color on this key we have some sort of flag to distinguish between the normal numeric keys and these operation keys so it can be uh, anything like op flag or anything so i'm going to use that op flag okay so let's try to write a key component okay so let's create a new file here okay new file and that will be key.js again we are going to copy these two things all right then we are going to again copy this statement all right let me just copy these two things render okay and we are going to use key here then in render a return and then we are going to write our uh, code here okay so to make keys like these i mean these are circular keys and if you have programmed for android or ios or if you have used this platform you might be well aware that uh, this kind of controls are not natively supported on either of the platforms right because uh, android buttons are kind of you know materialistic in design and they are squarish and ios buttons are more like text written on a plain surface right so these are all custom designed components so to do that we'll actually have to create our new custom component so we'll have to uh, be responsible for capturing the touch event 
on our component and then we have to display the UI of our component as well. So to handle the touch event, React Native actually provide us with this touchable highlight API or you can say component. Now this component can house other components. So whenever somebody uh, presses on touchable highlight, it is going to dispatch the actions to your custom code. Okay. So let me just create a touchable highlight area. Okay. Touchable highlight. All right. And then we are going to put some nested components inside this touchable highlight so it can be view okay and that view can house a text element okay and in this text we are going to write symbols okay the symbol which we are going to receive from the numpad so we are going to create groups in I mean groups of keys in numpad and those keys uh, I mean those groups of keys are going to pass their own symbols and that symbol will be uh, represented uh, on this one particular key okay so it will all uh, make sense once uh, we start putting uh, in the keys in the numpad okay all right so now as we have talked that touchable highlight can actually you know <coughs> capture the press events so this is the handler which you can use to capture the press events okay so this is how you use Touchable highlight. Okay, now we need to bind this on press, right? So we are going to use super props and then again props here. This is this dot on press and this dot on press dot bind, then this. Okay then we will write on press Oops. on press as of now we don't have to be concerned about this okay all right let's try to put in this key inside numpad okay only one key key okay and as we have talked that uh, we need to pass in the symbol which can be displayed here so we are going to pass in a symbol let it be numeric one okay and let's close this so let's see if anything is visible here can't find variable because we haven't imported it key from key.js as it is located in the same directory as numpad.js so we don't have to provide component like this okay so this is uh, es modules things going on so i will probably record a video about es6 modules because they are natively supported by many browsers now so that is something which you must understand okay all right so key okay let me try to reload that okay so we have got our key here and as you can see if i press this thing i can see that it is actually capturing the press event so that is how touchable highlight work so this is touchable highlight and it houses this particular view hierarchy which is getting rendered on the screen okay all right so let's quickly style the component so that we can actually you know put more keys in so again a style sheet dot create 
okay and let's try to you know we need some sort of mechanism to distinguish between the operation keys and normal numeric keys so for styling purposes we can do something like this dot props dot op which tells that if it is a op key or a normal key okay so if it is a op key we are going to uh, apply two styles styles dot key and we are going to style i mean we are going to apply styles dot op key as well okay so we are going to actually uh, put some other color code like this see everything looks the same but the color and the background color of the op keys are different okay so we are we can do something like that in this particular style op key and in the normal case just styles dot key okay so it applies two styles and it only applies this one particular style and this particular style is common between the op key and the non op numeric keys okay so let's try to style keys Mm, yeah so for keys we are going to make some border radius and it can be 30 okay let's uh, put some color first so that we can actually see what is happening background color it can be anything uh, again let's go back to tools and then pick a brighter color okay c7 is good then we are going to put c7 here and let's bring this to front okay all right then we are going to provide it some width at it will be 60 and height as well so it should be 60 as well all right unexpected what seems to be unexpected here mm. yeah there is no comma here okay so let's see can't find variable styles okay so these are this this should be the styles okay so we can see this one particular circular button here so again we have to style the text element as well so let's style the text element again styles dot key text or you can name it anything okay and key text key text and the font should be more like 20 okay styles dot key text and i think it is applied or not let's say yes it is applied as one got bigger this time okay now let's try to align the content properly so it uses flex box but the flex box direction is uh, row wise in css and in react native it is column wise right so everything is column aligned first so in case you are unaware of flex box notation and what justify content and align items are i would request you to go and check uh, the css tricks tutorial out because i think it is the best uh, tutorial about flexbox because i have learned quite a lot from that one particular tutorial about flexbox okay so we are going to justify our content in center okay so this is all flexbox code now okay so as you can see since flexbox is column aligned so our content has been aligned vertically in the center right 
and also we would like to align items in the center which will align the items or the children in the center of the cross axis okay so as you can see now that we think that key is ready right all right but still the opt key thing is remaining right so let's first try to put in some keys and then only we will try to style the op keys okay all right so let's make some groups here first of all all right delete this because we don't need it now as you can see which we are yeah there are rows of these keys right and then we have got this uh, scroll panel where more keys are arranged in horizontal fashion right so to make something like this we are going to create new groups okay so to do that let's write something like this and then remove this key and we are going to create rows so style dot styles dot num group okay so that is how we are going to style our rows all right so let's put in one key and the symbol okay and this one all right and then we can you know just copy paste it four times because there are four controls on row one and then you can do like this one okay all right so let's see so only key number one is visible here to make other keys visible we'll have to style this num group and make it flex one and the flex direction should be rows okay okay now you can see all of these keys because earlier everything was getting under this one numeric key okay and you should justify the content along the primary axis with a space between so this will distribute your keys uniformly across the primary axis right because since the flex direction is row so this will be the primary axis and it is going to uh, justify the content which actually you know align the children on primary axis so this will result in this sort of ui right so now we'll have to create two more rows okay for five six seven then eight then nine okay let me see what i wrote there so point n equals to right nine zero okay no zero here this should be zero then this will be point and then it should be equals to okay so as you can see we have got our buttons here and make uh, let's make these somewhat lighter to do that i'm again going to select a lighter color here mm, let me select this one okay ea 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 so that it exactly not exactly but it matches the ui which we discussed okay and let's try to reload it 
okay now the keys are somewhat lighter okay and then now we have to design the op keys so since the op keys are hosted by a scroll i mean a scrolling container we are going to use yet another react native component that is scroll view okay so this can actually provide us with a scrolling area so scroll view okay by default scroll view scrolls in vertical direction but we want this scroll view to scroll in horizontal direction okay so to do that we have to write something like this horizontal true now this is a prop okay and you can learn about these props and all from react native documentation all right so again we are going to you know put in some keys so let's put some keys here but uh, as we discussed that we need some sort of flag to tell the key component that these are op keys so we can use something like this op equals to true and this will uh, actually help us in you know styling our op keys properly and later in the third part we will use this op key flag in order to make some you know justification and uh, decisions about what sort of calculation to apply okay so first one should be the del key okay the other one can be anything let it be plus then let's copy this and paste it a couple of times okay so this can be minus this can be multiply this can be divide this can be bracket open this can be bracket close this can be sign okay so our calculator is able to calculate the sign and cos in 10 of values so sign cos and i mean cos and then 10 okay all right so as you can see we have got these scrolling keys here and you can press these right now but these keys do look uh, visually similar to the other numeric keys to make the distinction we'll have to select a color first let it be any darker shade this one will do okay and then we are going to go back to the key okay and in keys we are going to create this style element okay of key then background color this can be this color okay and let me bring that up it's still not applied okay why it is not applied let me see props op okay so we have provided a prop op and it is true as well but somehow the styling is not applied let me try to reload this okay as you can see the styling has been applied but still there is one styling flow here as you can see in our initial design the color of these op keys is white so to do that we'll have to do some decision making here so we are going to make a decision like this so if this dot props dot op is defined then use 
one more styling as well in addition to key text style okay okay so this is javascript i think you might be aware of the syntax if this flag is set this will be the result if this flag is not set it will result in null okay all right so let's write op key text and the color should be white or ff 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 yeah so let me try to reload this as you can see now the color of our op key is white right now also make our op keys uh, somewhat distant to each other okay to do that we can do margin and let's reload this i mean to reload your application you can do i mean on android simulator you can press rr i mean you can tap r double time so as to reload your application now i think that we have got our ui ready and it looks uh, let me kind of similar to this ui right now in the third video we are going to write the logic to tie every single element together so that these element can actually work in cohesion and they can actually uh, you know work as a calculator ui okay so make sure to give this video a thumbs up in case you learned a little bit about react native ui development from this video and share this video with your friends and family or with someone who is trying to learn mobile development or react development or react native development also subscribe to this channel in case you are interested in learning more about um, programming videos and soft skill videos and everything related to tech thank you all bye bye